It's the Channel Mom Show with Jenny Dean Schmidt. We're here for you. Every kid is unique, and every mom wants to capture that uniqueness on film. Bring your family's memories to life, supersized and gorgeous. Just click Turpin on Portrait Gallery's ad to the right of this video to get your summertime promotion for kids and families. We are back with Dr. Emerson Egerich, the author of Love and Respect, the head of Love and Respect Ministries. He is literally responsible, probably with God's help, for saving thousands of marriages. We are also here with Michelle, who's being very brutally honest about the marriage troubles that she's having, which could probably be seen uh, nationwide and worldwide. She's not alone in some of the things she's describing. Um, Dr. Egerich, here's what I'm thinking. I know it's frustrating for you because you really want to help her, and, and we're giving you 15 minutes. Uh, what, what I'm going to suggest is that maybe, just like you did with Misty the last time around, and uh, she, she later wrote to us that just the one or two things you gave her really did help, that as Michelle tells you a few more things, maybe you can just go to a basic for her that she can start with. Um, mm -hmm. So go ahead, Michelle. Tell him what you wanted to tell uh, him uh, about how you really feel about your husband. Well, you had asked what it is that causes him to feel like I don't respect him. S sadly, if I'm being honest, it's because I, I just don't res respect him or like him very much, and I've let him know it. I let him know in marriage counseling the only reason and my only hope, actually that I have no hope, but that my sole reason for doing it is our kids and the vows I made before God. So I think he has no reason to feel liked, esteemed, or respected in my eyes. And you physically do not touch. And can you tell Dr. Egerich about a moment that you had where you were sort of forced to hold hands by a counselor, what happened there? We, we started marriage therapy about, I don't know, four weeks ago. And one thing that she had us do was just hold hands. And that was pretty powerful because the minute we did, I mean, he burst into tears. And so did I. Which I guess gives me some hope that there somewhere exists an emotional connection, but it's one thing to, to feel that in that moment, but then real life happens and it's insurmountable to find it. And it's back to the same thing where you don't like each other, you're not kind to each other, you don't touch each other, you don't communicate. Not at all. And I feel, I, I am just so lonely. I'm so lonely and so sad. And I feel like he is irresponsible and unintentional and hurtful with my heart. And that's one of my questions too, is I was having a conversation with my sister-in-law who lives with her parents and, and she was kind of describing that she feels some similar ways with her mom. And I said, yeah, but your mom's not responsible for filling your heart. And it, it dawned on me that, well, maybe my husband's it's not his job and I don't have to hold him responsible for filling me. And so how do I make sense of where God fits and what his role is in caring for my heart compared to what my husband's is. Because when I rely on my husband, I feel like I just get hurt. So I'm just not sure. I feel like if I could find something, an anchor or something that would, that would fill me and keep me going because I self-talk every day and convince myself that this is the right thing to do but it's so empty and it's painful and it's so sad. I just feel like I need an anchor and maybe it's God filling me and not my husband. Well, I think you have captured what I think many women are feeling and are good hearts, good willed, wanting intimacy, wanting to connect, um, but confused because there are things about him that you find unacceptable or things have happened. And, you know, as I say, when Sarah and I first met and we thought about getting married, I didn't say to Sarah, you know, Sarah, I hate you, and, and you hate me, so let's get married. <laughs> you know, it, yeah, yeah. It doesn't, go, it doesn't go down that way. So how is it that two people who care for each other want to spend the rest of their lives together come to this point where they move from ally to enemy and uh, from friends to, you know, um, enemies? And it, it, it confuses us, but there are a number of things that need to be unpacked, and I can't do that in our short time, but obviously there is something that happened in the past 
that deeply hurt you. And so that has resulted in some less than positive feelings you have towards your husband. I don't know what those issues are. They can range from an affair to pornography to addiction issues to simply uh, that he isn't who you want him to be. And that is a wide range, and I'm not going to have you ask answer what that is, but usually something has happened, and you have to decide whether it's a moral issue or it's just a preference issue. If it's just a preference issue that he isn't who you want him to be, but he's not a wicked man, he's not an ill-willed man, and the fact that the two of you held hands and he breaks down and cries, this says to me, the guy probably does not understand what's going on here. And, and I don't know who started it, it's the chicken or the egg thing, but I know you have the power and the influence to bring about some changes here. Here you are on the one hand very lonely and wanting to connect and wanting him to meet your emotional needs, but you've sent him the message that you don't like who he is as a human being and you don't respect who he is as a human being, and he's unacceptable to you. Now, if he communicated to you that he wanted you to meet his emotional needs, but, oh, by the way, he hates you and can't stand your face, and all he wants to do is use you for sex when he needs you for sex, I mean, you are not going to respond to this man. And I'm going to tell every woman listening, you cannot communicate that you disrespect who this man is at the core of his being and then turn around and expect him to decode that you need him to meet your emotional longings. What happens a lot of times is women overstate the problem, and women intuitively know that they're doing that with each other. But men don't. They take it at face value. And you only have to say to him once or twice, I don't respect anything about you. And that's comparable to him saying, let's get it straight. I never have loved you. I don't love you now. I never will love you. And no one could love you. Mm -hmm. He only needs to say that a couple times to destroy the relationship. You only need to say to your husband a couple times, I can't stand who you are as a human being, to lead to the next step where he just pulls back. But the question is, is he pulling back because he doesn't love you? Or is he pulling back because he doesn't think you like him? And every woman who's listening needs to make that decision as best she can. What she tends to do is personalize it and conclude he doesn't love me. And he might not. He may be an abusive man. My dad tried to strangle my mother. I get that. But if, on the other hand, this is a good-willed man who simply doesn't understand how to do the relationship on the heels of someone telling them they have contempt for who he is, then what we need to do is remove that from the relationship. We need to send a new message that I do believe in you. I do need you. I need your strength. I'm not expecting to try to heal me. And when I say that I need to talk to you, it's not because I want to point out something you're doing wrong. I just feel wonderful as a result of us talking for a half hour, and I feel great in response to that. It just means so much to me when that happens. So if you send the message of disrespect, he's not going to then respond. But if you send the message of honor and respect and uh, do something in a new way, I think he's going to reopen his spirit to you. Yeah. I can predict that happening. Yeah, and let me interject. We, we did have some um, questions on Facebook, and it goes along with what Michelle is telling you. Somebody said, how do, I, how do you respect somebody who's a cheating husband? And, and you're saying, and, and Michelle has said that her husband, she doesn't think is cheating, and he's also not abusive, um, but she just doesn't feel good about him at all. Uh, she just doesn't respect well, yeah. him. And he, this is a normal feeling that women express. Yeah. Because they think we're asking them to respect evil behavior or unacceptable behavior. I want every woman to listen to me. We are not talking about showing respect toward unacceptable behavior. It's insulting to me to tell my mother to respect my dad, who committed adultery when I was 11, and he attempted to strangle her when I was two and a half. Mom was never to respect any of that, and, and nor to feel respect for that. The question on the table, and my mother eventually was instrumental in my dad finding Christ. She won him over. My mother was a dynamic, had several businesses, a strong woman. She was not a doormat. What we're talking about is you cannot show contempt toward the spirit of a man and expect him to repent or change or come under conviction. If you despise him in your heart, if there's an attitude that says you're despicable, he won't change. I'm not saying that if you communicate, look, I believe in you more than you believe in yourself, and what you're doing here is unacceptable, and you're destroying our family, and you're a man of honor. I married you because you were a man of honor. What happened to the man of honor that I believe in? I think I believe in him more than he believes in himself, and I'm hurting right now, and I need you. How do I communicate this in a way that you don't think I'm trying to send you a message that I despise you? I need you. The family needs you. But this adulterous relationship is unacceptable, and I cannot continue. How do we do what's honorable here? You're an honorable man. Speak to me. 
help me, yeah. even though what you're doing right now is wrong. So you can get really, really strong, but you've got to use words that will bring him under conviction, not push him away. And that's not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but we have seen it when it's applied. It brings about a revolution. It, a do, it does. Revolution. And is there a sentence in there, Michelle, that he has said that you can picture yourself being able to say to your husband, if it's the only sentence you can hang on to, but it's your step one sentence, is there a sentence in there that you can begin to try to say to your husband? She's thinking. Well, I think one thing you can do is just trail on the hand-to-hand thing. You know what I respect about you is that that day in that office when you got emotional and cried, that just, that's the man that I believe in. That's the man I know is there. And apparently I've done something to cause you to close off. But you know what? That touched my heart deeply. And maybe I've been unfair to you. I've expected you to be my healer. And the reason for that is because I guess I believed in you more than I should. And it's been unfair to you. And you don't know how to heal me always. And I've been very unfair to you. But thank you that day for showing that emotion. That's the man I want you to know I, I believe in and I need. And then walk out of the room. Don't say yeah. to yourself, oh, this is going to be great. We can now talk for 45 minutes and have a heart-to-heart. That's premature. Walk out of the room. Or write this in a note if you don't want to say it to him face-to-face. Keep it short. Keep it sweet. Men don't want to talk forever. Can, can you do any of that? Yeah, I can do that. You can? In a note? Can you? Yeah. And I can talk to him. Our, part of the problem and, and, is it's it's so unpredictable, and um, but if you I, walk out of the room, it can't go into that crazy cycle. But I, what I'm saying is one. I mean, and I I feel hesitant because I don't want to disrespect him publicly mm-hmm. <laughs> right now, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because he is very good willed, but he really he struggles day to day to be happy. I think he's a pretty unhappy person, and it's like he needs. Somebody to take it out on, and I'm the closest thing to him. So when I try, I, I talk myself into for five straight minutes. I will self-talk and say, "Okay, go put your arm around him," or try to show him a loving gesture, and he tightens up and doesn't want. But it's not love that you need to give him right now. It's respect. That's exactly right, and this is exactly right, Jenny. That those are gestures that are important to you. A hug. I mean, I was really surprised that the holding hands caused him to weep because that usually doesn't work. Men will lock up. So you've got a tender man inside there, but it isn't love that he needs. He probably he knows you're a loving woman. He feels that he's the unloving man. That's the message that's being sent. And as a result of that, you don't respect him. So what you need to do is not go to him and hug him or tell him you love him. You need to send what I call a respect note, a respect message. This is the thing that women don't fully understand because it's not how God has designed them. You don't think in terms of this vocabulary about saying, I respect this about you. Don't say, I love this about you. Say, I respect this about you. As I, I, in our conference, I talk about writing a respect note that most men would die for their wives. We saw that in, in Aurora, Colorado, where the four boyfriends gave their lives to save those women when that massacre tragedy took place. Men die for women. And you can write a note like this. He I could... was thinking of you yesterday that you would literally die for me. That overwhelms me. Thank you. And then I tell him to sign it this way. With all my respect, the one who still admires you. Right. With and Dr. all Arrich, my respect. We're so appreciative of you. Please tell people how they get a hold of you. Loveandrespect.com. www.loveandrespect.com. And uh, we'd love for you to check out what's available there. Yeah. And You're... Michelle will be praying for you because it burdens me. I see every woman is kind of like my mother. And so... Uh, even though we said some things quickly, you know, my heart's with you. Your heart's in the right place, and women's hearts are in the right place. Yep. Sometimes they deliver the message uh, prudently.